Hello, everyone. So thank you for joining the seminar series organized by the Empathic Computing Laboratory. I'm your host, Hyun Joo. And our guest speaker is uh, for today is Jin Gi Jung, who is currently a senior software developer at Digital Maritime Consultancy in Denmark. He earned his PhD in KAIST in South Korea with a focus on AR VR. So he had uh, carried out AR VR research for safety training in many years. Uh, and the uh, title of today's talk is Harder, Better, Clearer, Stronger. The talk will be an hour with a brief Q&A session. Please join me to welcome Jingi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Hyunun. So um, uh, my name is Jingi Zhang, and I'm really, really happy to be here. So the title of this talk is Harder, Better, Clearer, Stronger. Um, so yeah, as some of my, you know, uh, this is inspired from the song Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger by Daft Punk. Such a big fan of Daft Punk. <laughs> but um, this uh, title, I intentionally uh, replaced the faster to clearer because in this talk, I want to uh, empathize the clarity in work. And uh, also I want to share my experience when I uh, plan the experiment and also implement the, some application for experiment that probably will helpful for you. And I, I believe you probably know the uh, my best friend is one of your colleague, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's Mark. <laughs> yeah. This I is the <laughs> 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 You can see how happy Mark is. <laughs> so yeah, I, I really want to say that uh, I'm a really, really big fan of your, your work. And I am really, really uh, want to appreciate your contribution to academic uh, uh, academies in AR, VR research. So I really, really uh, want to yeah, shout out uh, Mark and, and his team, you. So yeah, this is just what I want to express. So a little bit about me. So I'm currently a senior software developer at Digital Maritime Consultancy. So right now I'm in maritime industry and I had conducted AR VR research during my master PhD and postdoc. And this, um, this uh, 360 image is me uh, in Ismar 2018, right before I made presentation. So yeah, that's me. So yeah, this is just a glimpse of my life. So I'm 39 years old and I'm running to 40. So um, the beginning of <laughs> beginning of my life, like 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 you, uh, this was yeah best part of my life as a child, and I went to yeah study for university, and I entered to uni. And during my university, I hooked into a game called GTA 3. And I think that's probably the major reason I falling into falling in love into VR uh, and AR industry. And I started this uh, AR uh, from AR research from master and PhD and postdoc. So more than quarter of my life, I have been involved into AR research and also VR as well. And uh, today I want I will show uh, for my research during uh, what I did in during this postdoc. So it was quite productive three years, <laughs> and I, and then I moved to Denmark and I started my journey as a developer. So yeah, that's that's my life. And yeah, more little background of me. So right now what I'm doing is I'm uh, contributing one of the biggest open source platform called Maritime Connectivity Platform. And I'm also working for standardization and also specification because this will be one of the uh, profounding standard in maritime industry, especially in digitalization. And I'm also working as a full stack developer and I'm also installing and deploying M3 services all over the world. So like Korea, Denmark, and yeah, 
probably other worlds. And uh, we actually have uh, some contract from Australia. So hopefully we will uh, deploy the next MCP service in Australia. That might be really cool. And uh, I am uh, probably uh, work for AR display on ships. So that might be really challenging because there are no stable feature at all on ship uh, on the sea. So that's also kind of my future work. And I probably need your advice on that in the future. And yeah, now I'm living in Copenhagen and I, and I love to paddling a canoe in yeah, my free time. So that's me. Purpose of this talk is, uh, as I said, I want to share lessons learned during my career, especially on my uh, experimental design and also yeah, uh, implementation issues and how I develop this kind of lessons learned to a personal project called IL. And this talk, I will more focused on to development parts, not the research or analysis part. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that this uh, help, helps to you in your, your uh, implementing and developing your experiment. So how AR and VR can be used in more practical way? This uh, question has been addressed by my wife because she wants to see me uh, not like playing game, AR, VR game, but more yeah, hands-on stuff. So uh, the answer for me was uh, AR, VR based training, so-called uh, virtual training. So uh, after, after uh, having this issue, I started my journey for uh, research of virtual training. So if I uh, have opportunity to define the problem of learning, then yeah, this, this might be the one, simple. There is a user and there's information. And if user gain this information, then we call it knowledge. But training is a bit different. There is information, but you need to make some sort of procedure. And then what you do is you need to follow this procedure and keep practicing a lot because it's also uh, about uh, intelligence, but also about these motor skills. So you will gain this competency from uh, this uh, practice. So if you want to implement this uh, training into yeah, virtual training, then what you need to do is uh, you have a procedure that should be given by industry, and then you will turn it to that uh, visual interface like, like uh, here, 3D arrow and, and some floating 3D text indicating something you do. And there will be some kind of interaction that uh, as a feedback that you uh, react on this interface. Like yeah, in this example, you need to go uh, in certain dis distance and then you will evaluate the performance of the user, which is really, really critical in yeah, experiment. And this evaluation can be also used for a uh, kind of triggering flow. Like uh, if user, is required to achieve something, but if a user fail to do it, then this uh, evaluation will check uh, this user does not um, satisfy the limitation, then uh, a requirement, then user need to go back and do uh, keep doing uh, what he did yeah, in order to satisfy the criteria. Yes, so this is the first, um, first uh, paper I've worked on for the virtual training. So um, there is a procedure visual interface, but what I want to do in this paper was comparison of these two interface. One is mouse and keyboard, uh, yeah, very conventional interface, and versus this is HMD with the uh, yeah, head tracking uh, capability, and this is Mio sensor or for hand gesture tracking. So um, I want to uh, see the comparison of how these two different types of interface can affect to the performance. So, yeah, so, and we also want to testify two types of uh, tasks. 
So one is requiring procedural knowledge and one is requiring technical skills, which requires more motor skills part. And the finding is here, um, if you utilize HMD and wearable sensor, then this is more suitable for technical skill training, but uh, monitor and keyboard mouse uh, combination was uh, yeah, performed better than this HMD and wearable sensors for procedural knowledge uh, training. So that was the conclusion. And you probably can see uh, what kind of training it was. So this is <clears throat> really important. Welcome to Life Boat launching up. Really important uh, training because uh, evacu evacuation is one of things that ca can happen uh, every time, everywhere. So all the crews on ship should uh, have trained on this lifeboat launching training uh, at least once per month. But if you uh, really try to launch uh, this, this lifeboat on the real ship or the real boat with the actual lifeboat, that will cost a lot. And there are a lot of uh, complexity in, in uh, triggering and also interacting with different um, uh, equipment in here. So it's very hard to memorize. So there, I, I would say there is a really, really nice fit to uh, virtual training uh, to compensate this, this kind of limitation. So it's very cost-effective and user can keep practicing uh, a lot by themselves. So um, yeah, it was, it was quite great combination. And if you go further, you also need to get in and you, you need to, yeah, press something and trigger something and blah, blah. So in this paper, user is required to do what user need to do in, in this matter. Right, I'll move on. So there were several development issues. There was no standard way to describe work and procedure. So what I received from, from the, uh, the navigation lecturer, it was pathetic <laughs> to convert that into program because uh, it was very, um, I would say it's not standardized. So uh, it's quite difficult to implement this scenario. And uh, one of the problem was probably you might also have some experience. User is curious enough to touch everything. So like this. So uh, even if you design really well in the experiment, the user doesn't follow the, the scenario and do whatever they want. This is quite embarrassing while you are yeah, doing some experiments. So what you need to do is uh, provide proper visual interface to guide user in the right direction. So uh, lessons learned from, from this uh, work, uh, objects of interest should be separated from environment. So um, in this figure below, I uh, noted uh, some, some <clears throat> object and environment and actor like this. So this interactable object should be separated conceptually from the beginning of the development. So I think they will, that would be also really helpful to convert this, um, this training. If it is uh, based on virtual reality, if you want to convert into augmented reality, it's easier because environment is there in uh, augmented reality, it's real environment. And what you need to do is just configure interactable objects in there. And the second thing is object slash environment. Yeah, the special element should be decoupled with a, a scenario, temporal element for reusability. If you want to, uh, for example, in the conventional virtual training, when I was in there, um, if you move this uh, fire to another place, then you need to configure, uh, change everything 
And also, if you want to do this kind of training into other place, then <clears throat> there are a lot of things you need to reconfigure. So it's it was quite bad for reusability. So I want to emphasize the there should be separation of spatial and temporal elements in here. The second work, um, this work is for how you can guarantee the safety for AL user. So imagine that if you are using Vision Pro, I think this this <clears throat> sorry this problem is still a uh, prevalence. So if you are wearing Vision Pro and if you're playing some game, but there is approaching vehicle uh, on behind, then you probably need to get some sort of warning that there is some dangerous object uh, is approaching. So this is this is kind of way of uh, providing how user can this kind of alert from the outside of this AR view. So in order to do this, I, I think for the sake of the sake of safety, we can't do this in, in the real world. So we actually made a virtual traffic environment and do this uh, AI game in the virtual uh, virtual environment. That's what we do in this paper. So um, yeah, we actually uh, try to estimate the distance of the of the car and user using CNN, uh, one of the popular deep learning method, and um, in you know, with this estimated car position, we gave some sort of uh, alarm to user, and there was two uh, visualization me visualization method in in this paper. So we we did comparison on this how how this kind of visualization uh, works for different case. So that was that was the idea. Lessons learned from this work. Uh, work and procedure should be both human and machine readable, which means if you write the procedure and if you, yeah, of course there should be some sort of script, yeah, written or not written, uh, some sort of text file, text file, then that if you hand it over to machine and if that works as executable, then I think that might be really, really great because it's both uh, works for human and machine. But yeah, of course, this is quite tricky, tricky issue. And performance should be measurable. Yeah, that's, I think you all know about this. Third work, annotation versus virtual tutor. So in this work, I want to uh, have a comparison of two types of different visual interface. One is the typical uh, famous uh, annotation, like a floating 3D box, uh, text and arrow, etc. And there is another one called virtual tutor, which is 3D avatar demonstrating what user need to do uh, beforehand. And you, what you user required to do is just following its motion. So we did some comparison uh, on the performance on the different types of tests. So we, what we did is uh, three tasks. One is maze escape, and second one is a stretching exercise, and th third one is crane manipulation. And I don't want to take about details because I think you probably can follow the, the name of title and you probably can read about it. So yeah, I think it's more to understand what the concept is. So let me let me see. So this is what annotation looks like. And this is what tutor looks like. So it's uh, actually same information, but how deliver this to user was different. And there was three different type of types of uh, tests. This one is maze escape, and second one is stretching exercise. 
third one is crane manipulation and of course three different tasks require different types of skills okay so let's move on <clears throat> so there are actually many issues uh, from the design stage uh, what kind of tasks usually will be trained so um, we prepared three different types of tasks because usually uh, I think we we probably want to know what kind of uh, interface will be yeah we actually have a hypothesis what kind of uh, interface will um, superior compared to other tests uh, other interface in such specific tests so that's what we try to yeah, testify and how much of information user will gain. This is also very important because you need to able to control the information, uh, amount of information, and that should be same, that should be the same for different type of interface. And which transfer method works better than others in certain situation. And that is in the paper. So you probably can check that out. So lessons learned. We actually put a lot of uh, effort to implement scenario engine. So uh, what I explained before, turn script into executable. So you, if you uh, write something in a, a very specific way, and then if you uh, uh, hand it over to the engine, then engine will implement this scenario as executable on behalf of you. That's uh, kind of key, uh, but it's it was quite easy to constrain the control variables. So in, in like for example here, the audio sound uh, is one of the control variable here. So uh, this should be provided in the same way. Yeah, that was kind of yeah easy to implement, and also easy to control the information transfer as well, uh, which means. Uh, in the implement implementation way, the format was kind of same, like uh, for what we did for annotation and what we did for virtual uh, tutor, but we made some sort of inheritance with these two types of interface. So yeah, uh, that was also easy to yeah control this kind of transfer. This is one of the code example. Yeah, I know it. It's boring, but yeah, I want to show that this is actually uh, works. But right now, this is uh, more a code uh, example. But uh, in the final uh, research I did, it, it was it was this uh, the content of this code was uh, exported to the JSON format. So if you write JSON and you plug into this engine, then it was able to make it to executable. And this is open source, and you can also have a look here. So yeah, that was kind of the implementation. But this is more like bottom-up approach. So I want to make this scenario executable. So uh, in this example, there was kind of dependency into Unity 3D engine because we, uh, this implementation is, is based on Unity 3D. So there was kind of limitation. And this is the quite recent work I uh, participated, discipline versus guidance. So um, in, this, in this work, we want to make the uh, attention area, which shows in this yellow line rectangle area. And we also put this uh, intentionally put this uh, very distracting environment around. So how user um, uh, distract from the, the attention area, then how user can get punished or maybe guided in order to make user back to on the track. So um, here discipline was kind of uh, implemented as penalizing the user. So when you usually look outside of the of the attention area, then there will be just blackout. 
just yeah make it black and usually if you uh, go in the right way then there will everything comes normal and the guidance usually when you uh, go out from the attention then there is uh, some 3d arrow um, directing to the attention area where you need to go back and the user uh, was yeah able to turning it back so that was kind of the idea lessons learned so um there are different factors and levels in user experience uh, as you know so there is a uh, you know dependencies in software platform and interface and also hardware platform interface and in the application level where you can do something as a software developer you can also implement effect of uh, interface like gui effects and interaction and by designing this kind of effect you can add up more immersion and empathy and also emotion and that will also impact to performance improvements in the case of virtual training and probably that will also uh, impact to unconsciousness but yeah I'm, I'm not professional about this so that's what kind of uh, that's the kind of thing uh, you need to put in mind when you design some sort of experiment so best practices in yeah, AR VR based scenario implementation. So spatial and temporal uh, elements should be separated and scenario should be controllable and each step of scenario should measurable and also uh, provides user-friendly guides and support multimodal, which means uh, I, in, the, in the example here, there was same information but one with with the audio and one with 3D text. So this that's actually same information, but that, that needs to be yeah, kind of supported as a multimodal interface. And state the purpose and who is responsible because it's, it's really crucial when you do some actual scenario and training because you are responsible to accomplish this training uh, criteria. And it's also really important to assemble because it's yeah, good for reusability. So, so uh, now I'm trying to introduce my work, my, my personal project called Il. Il is uh, in, in Korean, it's uh, work. And uh, what I'm trying to do is, yeah, like this idea of uh, from script to executable um, in from the top down approach. So I did before was bottom up uh, by writing a code and, and yeah, build more platform stuff. But I want to make it more platform independent because there will be a lot of uh, interface and, and platforms coming up in the future. So it is a data model for work de description. I will give you an example how it how it looks. And this is a procedure specification, but not like a yeah, block programming. So this is not a programming language. So this is like just what you need to do uh, as a just written script. And you can yeah, implement uh, in your engine later on. So things you can do with EAL is, of course, scenario authoring with sequential flow and designing information transfer, and also um, make it as a manual. For example, if you, uh, if you have uh, some recipe and if you yeah, want to memorize this recipe, then you can, you can write your recipe uh, by followed by this EAL format. And uh, resume, yeah, I actually made uh, my own resume with this ill format because it's resume is just sequence of my work previous done. So yeah, if you see here, this is my page and what I did here and also a lot of links. And yeah, if you look into the format, this is actually written in ill format. Yeah, I think. It's quite cool. 
And also you can make your own to-do list with this format. And I believe this will be used for uh, storyboarding, like uh, you having virtual character and that makes some sort of story because it's all about sequence sequences. So you can also write about it. So in model is look like this, but this is the simplest format uh, of the year. So it, it have a start if, which is triggering condition. This is, uh, it is like some sort of state machine. So before activating this, uh, activate it with this start if condition. So this uh, activating condition, it, this model will not work at all. But if you uh, trigger this start if condition, then it will go on activate state and where act actor who is responsible do some act uh, what should be performed within within uh, this ill state so when user or actor completed his his work that should meet with this termination condition which is ending so if, if user and what he supposed to do this and if or oh, if, if that meets with the end if then this ill state will be like just finished and that's done. And this is a yeah, conceptual drawing of it. So you can make this block. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't say block uh, programming, but this is the sequence. So you can make a several uh, sequence with this kind of uh, model. So the object of ill is uh, to represent any kind of sequences. So um, when I involved into the this virtual training, I think this high level concept is can be applied to any kind of work. So uh, I, what I want to do is uh, to make it more generic and more general model to represent all kinds of sequences. And also it can be used for abstract work to the higher level, which means um, if you, you if you write down about some work and that will remain the same if even if you have different kinds of platforms and also different types of hardware software or AI we are uh, yeah difference differences in there and if we have GPT uh, capability which means we can convert written script into executable uh, powered by GPT so I think it's more uh, powerful with with GPT if you use this kind of work for your yeah actual work and separate condition termination condition was very very important so uh, like uh, end of current ill so when does this ill will be terminated but uh, transition to another ill is different because if this has been even if it's it's done but if user does not um, satisfy the, the requirements, then user need to go back and do some other things. So here, and if is the first part, and the second part is what I'm working on as a flow. So that's another part of the model. And also really important to define uh, pairwise in, in relationship. So, because there is, if there is some task, then you split it that into subtasks, several subtasks. So that kind of parent-child relationship should be uh, affected, but in a different way compared to consequence, like doing A and doing B, then C. So they, that must be differentiated with this parent-child relationship. Okay, so demo time. Uh, this time for our get hands dirty. So we will deploy a GitHub page for your research in five minutes. That's what, what we will do. So um, we are trying to do with in model with uh, event driven system, which is me this case. And this the demo we show the all the features of il, and we will. Uh, collaborate with AI, which is the GPT, and also we will collaborate with 
GitHub automation. So there is GitHub bot uh, uh, automated by default. We will also collaborate with, with it as well. So if you write down the goal, then that will look like this. So um, start if, if we have GitHub account, GPT service success, paper title and abstract, then you're ready. Actually is me. And, and if, if a G GitHub page introducing my work is accessible, then everything is done. Oh, okay. Let me share my screen again. Okay, can you see? Okay. So if you, yeah, this is just task and I can split that into seven subtasks, which is yeah, shown in here, but um, yeah. I will look into this task step-by-step. Step. And one of the really cool thing about this is the last two, uh, two ill, this will be done by, yeah, this GitHub Autobot. So that will be done by, so this is a totally human machine collaboration, which is really cool. <laughs> yep, let's do step-by-step. Step. So here, so what you need to do is, yeah, when your GitHub account is ready, then you can do this work. And what you need to do is press a new button and enter repository name. So let's go to repositories and press this new button. And I'll type repository name, test, test. It works, done. Okay, we are done with the first step. So that will be terminated when a GitHub repo is created. And then now you have, you need the content to fill in. So what you can do is if you have a paper title, abstract and GPT service access, then you can uh, create your, yeah, introducing your work in Markdown format. Yeah, Markdown is one of the yeah, famous format to write a simple thing. This, this uh, presentation material is actually written in Markdown format. So I will use uh, one of the, GPT service and called written. So yeah, like here, you are a researcher and make a mock down for a web page introducing your paper title and your paper title. And can you make a markdown file with the bullet points with the from the abstract below? And you can paste your abstract below. Then that will make this beautiful markdown a script here. Then you can just you know, take a copy, done. Okay. So now a markdown format content is ready. And then we, what we need is to create an index MD file Come to here and press creating a new file in the main page and type name as uh, index.md. Here, the button creating a new file. So you don't need to install anything That's, that can be done by just web page. So here, index.md. And yeah, you're ready to enter. So moving on to next work, next yield. Copy and paste markdown, easy one. Let's get it done. And here, commit changes. Done. All right, so we are ready. But there is no way to access the page at all. 
because we are not uh, uh, enabled the GitHub page feature here. Yeah. So what you need to do, just moving on next. What you need to do is go to settings in the menu on top, pages in the menu on left, select main from branch and save. So this GitHub page feature is not enabled by default. So you need to yeah, make it enabled. So uh, setting, settings on the up, pages on the left. Then this is the menu for GitHub pages where you can deploy your web page on the public. And here you need to select your branch main and save. That's done. So what this what is doing is this will uh, by default have, have this Jekyll. Uh, yeah, Jekyll is here. Jekyll a library uh, in here. So this will make your index MD to beautiful uh, yeah, in the uh, Jekyll attempt uh, page here. So if you go to the main page and then you can see this yellow dot, yeah, like mustard. Then, yeah, this is GitHub automatically build your, your yeah, source code into the Jekyll, Jekyll uh, page and then automatically also deploy your web page on behalf of you on behalf of you. Now done. So actually this last two years has been done by the bot. Alrighty, now you got the power. Let's check. Go to settings pages and there you go now you have a site here this site Ta -da! so it's a it's a really simple one but you can yeah, probably get into how you can attach your beautiful figure and also other yeah, links to other resources in here because markdown is yeah really well known format and also you can just type the yeah chat gpt how to do this so yeah that's it. So what we did is, yeah, as a conclusion, what we did, we revisited the four papers and lessons learned uh, I gained from this work. And also from this demo, you probably have an experience with ill model and yeah, probably uh, that will help you make better clarity in your work. And I really, desperately need your help to develop this model to be used because right now it's just personal project. I don't have much momentum to lead this work. So what I want to do is I uh, want to have some sort of collaboration, uh, especially in design of your research and uh, yeah, how to make that into yeah executable yeah, program. All right, yes. Thank you for your attention. And there is a link to your documentation, but it's, it's right now it's pathetic. It's, it's, there is no information at all, but I probably need to fill more content on, on, the, on the EEL in detail. And you are yeah welcome to contact me with this email. And also you can reach out more information on me in GitHub. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for a wonderful presentation. So it was one, uh, interesting works and idea about the describing work as a new idea mode idea and new data model called ear so if you if you have any questions please raise your hand sign or leave it in the chat so let me ask you a question first uh, i think if your idea uh your if your data description method ear is used in our ARVR research. So I wonder, mm -hmm. so where it can be used? For example, so can it be used for study design in your training research, uh, releasing the life report? So can you explain mm -hmm. with a simple example? Yeah, yeah, thanks for the question. So yeah, let's take this example. 
So if you write about some task in your experiments, then this part will clarify what kind of uh, interface and, and what kind of information should be ready for the user. And also, and if will uh, clarify that this is kind of criteria user uh, need to meet to, uh, to uh, complete his work. So in this, in this uh, scenario, uh, you can design from the top level, then you can split that into, yeah, different uh, subtasks and different levels. And then you can specify what kind of uh, stuff should be ready in order to do this stuff and what should be done by user in order to complete this, this uh, ill, complete this stage. So there should be multiple uh, stage in order to do to in order to do some tasks, and I think this end if will also clarify what kind of skills user need to earn and what kind of uh, competency user will uh, user should earn during this stage. So in such uh, it, this is kind of uh, divide and conquer strategy. So you you can. Uh, while you are, yeah, especially in design phase, you can design your work, uh, design your task for experiment with with this form, and then you can convert this into the executable in the later on. But yeah, that will be really painful. Yeah, to be honest, like yeah, here in this source code. So if you go into the the actual source code. This is yeah, what we called task uh, previously. And yeah, this there is several sequence, yeah, like five, yeah, including finish, that might be six. So you can yeah plan the the this sequence and also uh, yeah in more detail what kind of information should be given. And that's kind of details of ill model, which I didn't talk about in detail in this talk. And you can yeah, design in a more clear way. Thank you very much. So yeah, we have a question from Uni Chao. Uh, yeah. Hi, Jingyi. Um, thank you for sharing your experience. And um, my question is about the slide you summarized your um, previous experience. So you have mentioned that um, this scenario should be measurable. Yeah, that's one. So um, to be honest, I'm not quite get, get it about what is the meaning of scenario should be measurable. So could you please explain yeah. more details or any examples? Yeah, sorry about uh, misleading. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I want to put here is this is not about scenario, but each step of scenario. So it's a yeah one sequence, and measurable means the user's activity. So uh, because we need to measure users users performance and their their skill. So uh, in here, the yeah yeah in in our implementation. It, there is a recording of all the users' activity during each specific step because that will yeah make you on more fine-grained analysis on the user's evaluation. So that's that was kind of meaning of measurable. So you mean like for example, we try to assemble some parts, then it will be better if we can. Dissect the each steps to assemble the whole material. That kind of um, classification will be better for scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think let's put it this way. So here we have seven different mm -hmm. stages. So and if you want to, yeah, it's it's yeah totally ridiculous, but if you want to measure users, users performance on this, <laughs> which is yeah really ridiculous, then you probably can also take some time 
And also you can probably track the track the mouse position on each stage. Like, yeah, for example, uh, press a new button and enter repository name here. Then you probably can yeah, record users activity in each step. Then you probably can measure users performance in each stage. Perhaps, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also in general, in total as well. Okay, yeah, I see. And um, you have any experience evaluate the user's performance in like objective way, for example, like physiological signals or like eye tracking signals instead of mm -hmm. just measuring mm -hmm. um, using uh, questionnaires? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, I think what we did in yeah, especially especially in this work, because it's yeah. Let's take one example: stretching exercise. It's it's really important to uh, yeah. I mean, as a performance, you usually need to uh, have to take very precise pose. Um, yeah, guiding to the guiding to the their own interface. So in this example, we need to track all the user's body parts and whether that's how how it is uh, close to the correct correct position. So that was kind of measurement we took in this in, in this example yeah, in this experiment. So I probably yeah can use other types of sensors to make other types of measurements like you said physi physiological. Uh, yeah, sensor as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's great, thank you. So, uh, uh, we have question from Gan. No, thank thank you, Ajinki, for the great talk. Uh, my question is um, about your yield model. You mentioned um, the demo that you showed um, triggers the GitHub bot to do some work. And in ill, I can see the task for the bot is pretty much described in just plain um, text. Um, is mm. there something that you set up for the bot to um, grab the information from your ill description? Or is that something separate that you are doing um, to make the GitHub bot to understand what's described in ill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the great question. So yeah, to be honest, this uh, this procedure is what is expe expected for this work. So there is no in direct interaction to GitHub pod like uh, this this script pushing GitHub pod uh, GitHub pod to do some stuff. So there is yeah, nothing like that. But this is kind of manual you can just follow and. There will be, I want to represent, there will be a collaboration, collaborative interaction with different type of actors. So right now here is, a, yeah, the first part, yeah, first five part uh, was done by human. And the last two parts was done by GitHub bot. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I strongly agree with uh, your opinion on how this act, because uh, this, no, not here. This act part is just written script. It's just text. But um, I don't remember the name, but there is a, some sort of chat uh, GPT uh, engine that converts this written text into API calls. So which, which you, like if you want to uh, keep looking some, for example, if you want to see the cost of ramen consistently, then that's what you can do with this kind of GPT bot. Then you, if you uh, write like, uh, write act like, um, please check this API for uh, the price, for checking price of yeah, some ramen, for example, then this, ChatGPT bot will uh, consistently do uh, execute this uh, act in the server side, and then will return the value as a as a end if uh, condition. So that will that's kind of way of how I can act uh, implement act.
but uh, yeah, to be honest, when I when I did in yeah, like yeah, let's take an example. Do, 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 do. Yeah, when I made uh, this, um, yeah. So it's as as you can see, it's ugly and it's quite platform dependent. So I can yeah, I can see if you want to implement Act in the engine, then that's there is something you need to do to yeah, you can get hands dirty like this. So there should be some sort of mapping on text to this actual code that should be exist existed in order to make real executable. Great, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thanks. Uh, any more questions from the audience? No, I have one more question from me. And uh, so, so here I seem to be on use like a manual. So, and uh, do you have any ideas how actual user users will use the ear? So, I mean, the so have you ever considered to make a authoring interface like a web based service? Yeah, good question. Thank you. I what I'm working on is uh, called ear today today I bought the domain and I'm working on to-do list web page and yeah you can just add on like uh, other kind of to-do list service like yeah to do east or asana or other stuff and uh, I want to actually I want to support uh post uh post procedure what I mean is if you've done something right now it's just a check mark done and that will probably disappear. And what I want to do is uh, to make it uh, more useful to make your resume, like for example here, this one. So this is built uh, on my works has been done previously. So I, yeah, in the future, if, I may, if I'm able to make some to-do list, then there might be some additional service that if you accomplish this thing, then you can probably check uh, what kind of ill you want to put on, on your resume. Then that will automatically make your resume based on what you did what you did previously. So that's kind of an example of how this yeah ill as a to, ill today can be implemented. But yeah, I will definitely yeah let you know when I make some type uh, some kind of prototype for this service. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you so much, Jingyi, uh, for all the great work and for sharing your uh, thoughts and ideas with us. And we learned a lot. And thank you, everyone, who joined and asked questions. And I, I hope you enjoyed this seminar series. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Bye bye.